This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My name is Leslie Poss, and I'm welcoming you to uh, all who are worshiping with us. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian. We are an expansive, inclusive, and progressive congregation. If you are online, please type a greeting in the comments, or maybe you'd like to share a prayer request or thanksgiving. In-house worshipers, please take a card from the pew pocket there in front of you, complete it, and drop in the offering plate later in the service. Many of you have asked what can be done to show Pastor Kathy our love and appreciation for her selfless sacrifice and service. Sacrifice? I didn't write that. <laughs> her selfless service to uh, Grace, and really to the greater Tuscaloosa, West Alabama community. She has requested and the session re approved that any financial gifts be applied to the planned labyrinth that will um, become a part of the new table of grace. Next Sunday, January the 8th, following worship, there is a reception in honor of Reverend Kathy and the congregation you are invited to attend that, and if you would please, would you bring a, a little something something to serve? It could be a sweet or a heavy hors d'oeuvre just to share with those who will be coming. Also, beginning next Sunday, January the 8th, our uh, morning Christian formation groups will return, including a special four-week event to be led by Avery Arden and hosted by Adam Brooks, entitled Loving Our Transgender Neighbors. About this uh, study Avery has written, maybe you're aware of the upswing in anti-trans legislation and rhetoric happening in our state and around our country, and you want to do something, but you don't even know where to start. Maybe you are trans, or a loved one is trans, and you don't even know whether you have a place in the church, let alone in the kingdom of God. Wherever you are on this journey, you're invited to participate. Avery will take us through some basic Trans 101. We will cover a lot of steps that individuals and our congregation can take not only to accept and protect trans persons, but also to affirm and celebrate them. Whether you come for one week or all four, whether you have lots of questions or ideas, we ask you to come and be a part of this and to pray for this event. I pray that it's gonna be uh, very helpful. As we come, as we continue this time of worship, we pray. O oh God, hold and tend, shelter and shield, sustain and inspire us. Amen. And I forgot to say, there are going to be uh, star words. No. Oh, that was later. Oh, you meant in the church. See, I messed up. Are we glad there's grace? <laughs> Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. Come all who are weary of wealth, of poverty, of power, of struggle, of division. Come all who are heavy laden with too much, with too little, with anxiety, with fear, with anger. Come all who have hope for liberation, for peace, for freedom, for the kingdom. Let us speak God's words together. See, I am making all things new. Let us pray. O star-flinging God, whose light dances across eternity, dazzle us into your presence this new year. Open our hearts to the mystery of your love. Awaken us to your presence knit to the ordinary, reveal to us what is possible, but not yet present. Heal us, that, <clears throat> heal us that we might be healers. 
reconcile us to you and to ourselves, that our living might be reconciling. Stop us often, we pray, with news that is good, with hope that holds, with truth that transforms, with a word <coughs> um, tailored to this trail we are on. May the word of your grace guide our steps like the sun by day and the north star by night. As we travel into the gift of a new year, amen. they go looking for God. Actively and consistently, day by day, they follow the star until it guides them to Jesus. I wish I was more like that, but I admit I tend to follow God with part of my heart. I tend to get distracted and lost, taking exit ramps off the road, following whatever new shiny sign is present. It's part of being human. In the prayer of confession, we acknowledge that more often than we'd like to admit, we find ourselves following the wrong star. Fortunately for us, God is the map maker, and God's map is measured in grace. So we have nothing to fear. Let us pray together. Let us seek God together. Join me in the prayer of confession. God of starlight, we know that faith is an avenging machine. Good news can't be bought or manufactured. It does not arrive at the push of a button. Instead, in this noisy world, we have to look for you in our midst. We have to walk toward you, just as the Magi did. We have to believe that love really can change the world. We have to seek the stars beyond the city lights. Forgive us for forgetting these truths. Forgive us for seeking you with only a portion of our hearts. 
We long to be more like the magi. May we walk your way every single day. Amen. Friends, we have only good news today. Since the very first day, God has taken the pieces of our hearts that we have offered up and said, I can work with that. Even in our failings, God has washed us with words of grace, belonging, and love. No matter what star you followed, no matter how far you've walked, no matter how lost you got, you belong to God. God loves you, forgives you, God claims you. Thanks be to God. Amen. been reconciled with God. Let us be reconciled with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share signs of Christ's peace. got to see did you see a bulletin cover what do we got up on what do we got on there can you see yeah yeah the magi following the star to baby jesus what um well maybe that's maybe that's the starlight i don't know i don't know but um we'll use our imaginations right so, yeah, so there they are. They had to travel a very long way. We don't know how far they had to travel, but it took them a long time. And what guided them? A star. So, I mean, we don't exactly do that to find God, do we? How do we find God? Maybe a GPS. Well, Maybe there might be a star in here, though, somewhere. Like, oh, look, here's one. There's a star on the communion table. Because we find God there, right? When we take communion, we meet God in that meal that we share. I wonder if there are any other stars around here. Oh, look, Sherry's holding a star. And look, Wayne's got a star. <laughs> and Barry has a star, and Sherry just passed hers off. And there might be another star. Go ahead. There are stars all around us. God is all around us. God is right here in the midst of us with every person here in the sanctuary. So we don't have to go on a super long journey like the Magi did to find the baby Jesus. All we have to do 
is look right around right here and find God right here in our midst. And that is very good news. And so to remember that very good news, I'm going to give you the star. I'm going to give you it. Take two, all right? Take one for yourself. Take one to give to someone else to remind them because we rise up. We rise up and shine our lights. There you go. So you can give to someone else and encourage them to rise up and let their light of love shine. Okay? Let's pray. Life-giving God, thank you for the, your light that shines in our midst right here among us. Help us to rise up and let your light shine for all the world to see. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. God of starlight, every part of us is trying to seek you. Our bodies that carried us into this space, our heads bowed in prayer, our hearts that keep whispering, there is more than just this. We are seeking you. We are turning over every rock and leaf, looking for fingerprints that belong to you. So meet us halfway. Find us in the maze. Quiet the rest of the world. Open the door to us with rich laughter and say, Come on in. We know you're near, so know that it's you we seek. Find us in these words. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you. Though darkness covers the earth and gloom the night, the Lord will shine upon you. <clears throat> God's glory will appear over, over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning radiance. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters on caregivers' hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and open wide because the sea's abundance will be turned over to you. The nation's wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Eth. They will all come from Sheba, carrying gold and incense, proclaiming the Lord's praises. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 14. God, give your judgments to the king. Give your righteousness to the king's son. Let him judge your people with righteousness and your poor ones with justice. Let the mountains bring peace to the people let the hills bring righteousness. Let the king bring justice to people who are poor. Let him save the children of those who are needy. But let him crush oppressors. Let the king live as long as the sun, as long as the moon, generation to generation. Let him fall like rain upon fresh cut grass like showers that water the earth. Let the righteous flourish throughout their lives and let peace prosper 
until the moon is no more. Let the kings of Tarsh and the islands bring tribute. Let the kings of Sheba and Seba present gifts. Let all the kings bow down before him. Let all the nations serve him. Let it be so, because he delivers the needy who cry out, the poor and those who have no helper. He has compassion on the weak and the needy. He saves the lives of those who are in need. He redeems the lives from oppression and violence. Their blood is precious in his eyes. Now we turn to our gospel reading um, from Matthew 2. We're going to um, hear the story of the Magi. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out in them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I have um, always been so grateful because one of our kind members always puts a glass of water here. You remember the day that it became a waterfall and I spilled it all down. Well, well today I think I need to drink from something a little bit different just to remind you. It says, be careful or you will end up in my sermon. <laughs> my family lives in fear of this mug, but just because I'm moving away doesn't mean you might not appear one day. <laughs> ah. You know that feeling when you discover a rider for the very first time? You wonder, where have you I'm not rushing into things here, but this week I found an author, Debbie Blue, and added her books to my Amazon cart based on excerpts of one of her writings. Maybe you do that too. Well, that and learning that she is one of the pastors of House of Mercy. One year it was named the best church for non-church goers. That, my friends, is an honorific worth pursuing. The other reason I started adding her books to my cart was this description of one of her early books called Sensual Orthodoxy. <laughs> Debbie Blue approaches scripture like a farm wife handles a chicken. 
carefully, but not delicately, thoroughly, but not exactly cautiously. Debbie sees tangled questions about a God who gets a body. How could you not want to read this book? That's one of the funniest and most intri intriguing book jacket blurbs I've ever seen. The description resonates so much with how I try to engage with the stories of the Bible. Carefully, but not delicately. Thoroughly, but not exactly. These stories, these stories which we read every Sunday, they're not fragile. Folks, they're not fragile. They won't break if we engage with them honestly. They won't fall apart if we challenge them. These are stories of real people and stories invented by real people. They are a window into how those who have gone before us have tried to understand God, welcome incarnation, and embody God's vision for the world. They weren't perfect people, and their understandings were limited by their context. We can honor their stories while acknowledging that God continues to urge us to add our stories to theirs and to keep telling the story of the generations with honesty and curiosity, to recognize their failings and our own, their moments of grace and our own. Today, we welcome the Magi into the scene, these astrologers whose very presence is the announcement to us through Matthew that the Christ child is a gift to the world, not some small of the world, but the whole world. And just to get our facts straight, they weren't kings, remember, and we have no idea how many were in their caravan, although it is forever embedded in our ears with that lovely little earworm that there were three. Their pursuit of a mystery revealed to them by the skies is our inspiration to pay attention to the mysteries within our own hearts and souls and ask where God is calling us to venture. Where is God calling you? Where is God calling Grace Presbyterian to venture next? And so the Magi call to us, and if we could ask them, they might pass on some really good wisdom. Don't travel alone. Oh, I've heard so many horror stories from some of you. You've had horrible stories of travel over the Christmas holidays. Many of you stuck together in the Denver airport, unable to get back. Others having car issues and struggling to get home. It's been rough. You know how hard travel is. It's even worse when you're all alone and if you have to sleep on the floor of an airport. It is tempting to travel alone. Very tempting. In some ways, it seems easier. You don't have to debate about whether to use Google Maps or Waze. You don't have to negotiate about what kind of music you'll listen to or a podcast instead or which book and at what speed to listen to the book. I never knew that was a thing until I got into the car with Lori Maxey. And blah, 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 I'm like, whoa, no wonder she reads so many books in a year. You also don't have to debate how many times to stop for the bathroom. Traveling alone may seem easier. Don't travel alone. Bring along people you trust, people you respect, people who engage with the world differently from the way you do. Oh, and, and bring someone who knows how to feed a crowd because food <laughs> makes everybody feel better. Bring along someone who isn't afraid to ask for directions because ways won't always get you there. Bring someone who will teach you a song as you gather around the fire. Bring people together like nothing else can. Bring a storyteller for the nights when the stars are hidden by clouds and you are cold and unsure if you want to keep going and if at any moment anybody wants to start Passing those boxes of Kleenex up, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to need them. They're everywhere. Pass, pass, pass them up. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, bring a storyteller. 
bring along someone who can get everyone up in the morning and put them through some yoga stretches to work out the kinks from sleeping on the hard ground. And don't forget a mediator, someone who reminds everyone how to listen to each other without fear. You can hear without listening. And you can listen, but can you listen without fear? And always bring gifts to share, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, which you probably don't have on hand anyway, and two of them are impossible to spell. Bring yourself, your voice, your strength, your weakness, your vulnerability, your dreams, and forgiveness. Always pack forgiveness and mercy. There is never enough of either one of those in this world. And please, please, bring your gifts of laughter. The Magi, they would urge us more laughter, less fear. Leave the fears behind. More faith, it's on the communion table, less fear. Fear takes up way too much room because when you put it in your suitcase, it starts to expand and it fills all the space. Throw it out. Faith. Faith needs that space because fear feeds on unfounded doubts and mistruths. Take the fear out, leave it behind. You will have much more space for gifts that way and you'll probably need to take home some travel presents. Pursue the promise of a future with hope. Those magi, very probably followers of the Zoroastrian faith, also believed in the eventual triumph of good over evil. We know nothing about them after their visit was over, after they returned home by another way. But certainly their eyes were opened by the harsh truth that Herod did not join them, in their celebration of the child. Had they been so foolish as to believe that an established king would welcome a potential threat to his throne? Had they been so unrealistic in their expectations? If so, they were brought back down to earth as they were reminded that there are those whose individual needs for power are so great that they cannot join with others to create a safer world for all. So which path will we choose? The path of fear, like Herod? You don't really want to walk that way. Or the path of hope and faith and mystery, like the Magi? We are so blessed to have such distinct stories about Jesus' inbreaking into our world. Luke, with his local shepherds, symbols of all Jesus would seek to do and to be. And Matthew, with his magi, outsiders by faith, out geography, strangers, surprise guests. Expect the unexpected, Jesus was saying and Matthew was teaching. Look for wild diversity, not buttoned-down uniformity in the church that would soon be built. Expect surprises. See the unpredictable as they only inevitably worth talking about. I'm sorry, see the unpredictable as the only inevitability worth talking about. Expect barriers and dividing walls to be breached and eradicated. Expect former foes to become siblings, those you once shunned to become cherished friends. Those are the words of theologian Scott Hosey. Expect surprises. This is the work to which grace has always been called. Grace's commitment to the community, breaching barriers and bringing down walls. This was true before I ever arrived in Tuscaloosa and will continue to be true long after I am gone. If you followed this sermon at all, and I realized there was lots of football on last night, and it's the first day of the new year, 
Well, if you're following it all, you may be wondering why I brought up that author, Debbie Blue, but then never told you what she actually wrote. I only told you what someone else wrote about her. Well, that's because I was saving it for last, because it's so good. Now, you know I love a nativity scene. I have more than I should from all around the world, and most of them have magi. Three, dressed like kings, and I let them join the party, though my seminary training always makes me wince a little, since technically they don't arrive at the manger. As Matt explains, they show up at Jesus' house, and he's a sticky little killer. What Debbie Blue has to say about it relieves me of all. Listen to her words. I've been thinking, maybe someone should start a small group of guerrilla activists whose task it would be to plant shocking figures in manger scenes. They could work both inside private homes as well as in the most visible places, suburban housewives. Ooh, it's a little dated here, sorry. Suburban housewives shriek to find figures on the roof of the manger on their mantle. Churches will be horrified to find Barbies and plastic dinosaurs on their altars. But people will pay attention. They will look twice. They may even stop their car. They may even get out when they see a garden troll or a pink flamingo or a big plastic Homer Simpson leaning over the baby Jesus real lawn. Not the first to come up with that idea. It might have been some guerrilla group that first placed the wise men in the manger scenes. Debbie Blue. Now, her idea about Batman and Barbie isn't new. You've probably seen those images around the Internet, if not in your own home. Adding them to the nativity scene on the church lawn? Now, that's fabulous. Adding them to the church nativity in the sanctuary? It would wake us up, wouldn't it? There's a church, and I couldn't find it, but there's a church that invited all the kids one year to bring anybody they wanted and so the nativity scene on the table, it had Batman, it had Barbie, dinosaurs, it had all of these things. But this shouldn't just be an invitation for children. It should be an invitation for all of us. Wouldn't it remind us that Jesus would welcome every garden gnome who only wants to be understood, who's tired of being looked down on for being so short, and what about every Barbie who's tired of being trapped in that ridiculous body with those high heels all day long? And how dreary our nativity scenes would be if some rebel hadn't decided that the Magi should be there too, the outsiders, who didn't share the same God or the same language or the same culture. They should be there too. And why not let them be kings and let them pass their crowns around and have everybody try them on? Let them be friend of the shepherds. Let them all be as one as they circle around that manger. And let us join them, freed and unafraid. Thanks be to God. Amen.
It is now a joy to ordain and install our elders uh, for the class of 2025, and so I would like to invite Leslie Dixon, Sherry Kimbrough, April Lane, and John Sykes to come forward. April and John were clothed with Christ and are now called by God through the voice of the church to enter into ministries of service and governance, announcing in word and deed the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ as we celebrate God's particular call to our family members represented here. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who has served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 7 and verse 27. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Grace Presbyterian now ordains Leslie as a ruling elder and installs her to active service. The session also installs to active service Sherry Kimbrough, April Lane, and John Sykes, who have previously been ordained. Ordination calls the whole church to renewed commitment and reminds us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. Trusting in the generous mercy of God, do you turn from sin's ways and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ? Um, and now I've lost my place. Excuse me. Oh. Um, uh, the, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable exposition of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? So I do and I will. <laughs> I do and I will. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? We seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Will you? We be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service. We you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, do you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And now do you, the members of the church, accept Leslie, Sherry, April, and John as elders, chosen by God through the voice of the congregation, to lead you in the way of Jesus Christ? Do you? We do. Do you 
agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide you, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. Do you? We do. I'm now going to invite Leslie to kneel so that we may... Um, you can face this congregation. Yeah. And anyone who is ordained is invited to come forward for the prayer if you are comfortable doing so. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servant, whom you call through baptism as your own, and mark as your own. Grant her the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give her a spirit of truthfulness, that make, she may show the compassion of Christ and the actions of daily living, and rightly govern your people. Give her the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may discern the gifts you have given, calling them forth from one another, and together use these gifts for the good of all. In obedience to Christ, and in the unity of his Spirit, may we proclaim good news, make disciples, be light and leaven, share our bread, offer a cup of cold water, Wash one another's feet. Make us strong in Christ to live as your people and show forth your saving love in the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Amen. Leslie. You are now an elder of the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Sherry, April, and John, we celebrate that you have accepted the call to active service on this session and are grateful for your leadership. May you each be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Ushers, please come forward. <clears throat> 
God has given to us a gift of a new year in hope and confidence <clears throat> of all God's longings to accomplish through this community of faith, let us bring our gifts to God. dedication God of yesterday today and tomorrow we offer all of ourselves to you take our talents our energy and our joy and use us to share your love take our mistakes our regrets and our pain and use us to bring your healing Magnify the gifts we offer before you today to spread your peace in the world. Amen. light shines and the darkness does not overcome it. At this table, Christ is revealed in the ordinariness of life, as once he was revealed in a child playing in his neighborhood, a child trusting his parents to keep him safe. Now he is revealed in a meal shared among the family of God, simple bread and wine, the stuff of life handed down from generation to generation. It is here at Christ's table where brokenness leads to wholeness. It is here at Christ's table where cracks allow light to shine forth. It is here at Christ's table where we experience him most clearly and where we are given the awareness to know him at every table. This is not a feast for Presbyterians. This table does not belong to this church. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, and it is Christ himself who invites you, all of you, to come, eat, drink, and be glad. Let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God, ruler of the universe, for your star shines still in the night sky, guiding your people in paths of love and justice. In the beginning, you brought light into the gloom and created a people to reflect your glory. When we have lost our way or turned away, you shone the light all the brighter calling us through the words of prophets, and even in the life of your Son, who was born as we are born, breathed and ate and walked and lived as we do, who not only revealed your way, 
but is the way. And even now, your spirit burns like flame in our hearts, in the community, in your word, at this table. As we come drawn to the warmth and wonder, we pray for your light to shine gently on those wounded places of our hearts, for we carry burdens of shame, of hurt, of grief, of fear. We carry a world crying out, longing for relief. We see violence and hatred, apathy and disgust, power misused and people treated as disposable. Give us courage to stand and see, to refuse to be consoled until your creation is healed by the hot light of your justice. When we shade our faces against the boldness of your way, help us turn to you in vulnerability and trust. When we assume the end of the story, remind us that you, not we, are the author. When we are tempted to settle into a comfortable routine of selfishness, hopelessness, or convenience, awaken us to your new thing and make us partners in your creating. As we break bread together, May our hearts be broken with yours, as we who are many are gathered like grain into one body. May your spirit knit us together. As we bring the gifts we have to offer, they, they are not the gifts fit for a king. May our hearts be open to receive your gift once again this day. And may your church be strengthened to be a gift to your world. As we share the same meal you, Lord, have shared with disciples, with enemies, with the church through the ages, may our eyes be opened, and may we recognize you. Amen. And so, friends, today we're going to celebrate communion in a way that we haven't done in quite a long time, and some of you have never been here for it, actually. Um, and so I invite you to participate I, as long as you're comfortable doing so. It, it's been, it was a tradition at University Presbyterian that we carried over and, and did once a month that we would form a circle around our sanctuary so that you can serve one another because that is the body of Christ. And so what we will do is take a moment to form a circle and the bread and cup will be passed to you, and you will pass it to your neighbor. And so you'll need to offer them the words as you turn to them, bread of heaven or body of Christ, cup of salvation or blood of Christ, whatever words are comfortable for you, and serve your neighbor. So I invite you now, let us form a circle around our sanctuary. in the same direction, right? <laughs> so pass this way, okay? Whatever way that is. Is that clockwise, clockwise. or counter? Clockwise, if that helps you, okay? Whew, Jesus didn't have to go through many, that many instructions, right? There were just 12 of them and then friends or who knows who all was in that room. I'm sure there were some women there and some children. And he did, what he did on that night was he took bread and he gave thanks to God for the people there, his friends who traveled with him, and you've been my friends. I'm so grateful for each of you, and I'll get it together in just a second. But I have a feeling he cried on that night too, for he knew he would not get to celebrate this meal with them for a very long time. He took bread baked by loving hands from grain that had been gathered by hard-working people 
and he lifted it, and he asked God to bless it, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat this and remember me. And they said that after the meal, he took the cup, and he poured it. But he offered words they had never heard before. He said, this cup is a new covenant, poured out with my blood for the forgiveness of many. Take and drink. Friends, this is a joyful feast, the joyful feast of the people of God, because it reminds us that God's table is so wide, and everyone is invited. And the truth is that everyone is invited whether we want them there or not. (laughs) But that is God's truth. And in God's realm, all will be revealed. And more importantly, all will be healed. All those who have suffered on this earth will be healed. And all the wounds will be healed. All the wounds that people have inflicted on others, that we ourselves have inflicted on others, all the wounds that have been inflicted on us, they will all be healed. And God will wipe every tear from your eyes, And a joyful feast will be celebrated. And what a joyful day that will be. But until that day, this is a very special congregation because you celebrate this meal every Sunday. And that is so rare. And so every week, you are unified again at this table. Don't ever take that for granted. This is a place of unity. Let that carry you forward. Faith, not fear. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So the bread and cup will be started at four different points around our circle. So the bread will come to you. So you kind of start maybe somewhere around over there. And let's keep, we'll keep these separate. Okay, and you can start at the back, yep, and you can start over on the front. Great, and you come back for the cup. Oh, I gave it all away. I gave it all away. Look at me. There we go. There, okay. I know, right? Okay, all right, there we go. The bread of heaven, David. And you may go ahead and take the elements as they come to you. It will probably be easier that way. The cup of salvation.
this one. Let's get into it. Pray. Oh, if you haven't, um, if you haven't taken the elements, please go ahead and do so. The bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gathering God, for once again you have filled us with good things, not just bread and wine, but your very self. Now may this glimpse of your kingdom sustain us and give us expectation to witness you at work in every place and strength to be your body in the world as you have blessed the bread and broken it. You have blessed us and empowered us. Make us your people again and again. Life for the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be careful, you could end up in my sermon. Um, also, um, there's been much concern that I'm taking Jesus away <laughs> from many of you. I'm like, why would I take Jesus? Jesus is right here. Besides, there's always more Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus goes with me, and Jesus stays here. What? Well, actually not, but he recycles, so um, he, I am a little concerned he has lost his sandals, so if you have some snow boots for Jesus, he's going to need them, some tights too to go under this tunic, but yeah, Jesus doesn't go anywhere, he is right here with you, he always will be, he always has been, and so he will. Um, now, just Leslie mentioned Star Wars. And actually, there are Star Wars for you. I just didn't, wasn't quite ready for her to give it away yet. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing is, so we've done these some in the past. On a penny to carry you through the year. Accidentally, they got printed double-sided. So this year, you get a bonus. You don't just get one Star Word, you get two. <laughs> so as you come out, please stop and say hello and... Um, Pick up your Star Wars, and we can carry them out with me. And please remain standing for a choral benediction um, after this, which I'm going to read because that's the way to get through it today. Let us look for Christ wherever we go. Let us never stop seeking, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this new year and forevermore, and come to Holland. Amen. <laughs> 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 